Hello, uh, quick unboxing. This is for the B850 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 gaming motherboard. It's um, AMD socket AM5. It's got actually quite heavy. Uh, that's the back of it. So you can just pause and have a look. And there's the general specs for you to look at. If you want to pause and have a read of those. And let's get it opened up. Box isn't sealed, it's not shrink wrapped. So we'll open it up, have a look inside. Uh, that's just packing cardboard. That's the motherboard itself, which I'll try and lift out. Might have to take the whole tray out, because again, it's got quite a bit of heft to it, it's quite heavy. So I'll just turn it upside down. Tease it out of the box. Wow, that is actually pretty heavy. So there's the motherboard there. I'll move it out of the way. Right, look at the bits we get with it. There's a very nice uh, case cable connector thing. So you plug them in and then it slots on. So that's kind of nice. There's a uh, M.2 heatsink pad, have a look of it. A couple of SATA cables, uh, one of them is right angled as you can see. That's the aerial for the Wi Fi, it's a proprietary connector, so if you break it, you're in trouble. It's not your standard aerial screw on thing. Uh, case decal. Uh, and various, well, two M.2 pad things. Another set of M.2 pad things. Uh, multilingual installation guide, which will be about as useful as a chocolate kettle, probably. Um, yeah, generally pretty generic. Yeah, this I'm going to think is probably the compliance stuff because it's got Wi Fi in it. So this is all the we obey the law stuff for Wi-Fi emissions. So I'll just pop that back in there. And then we'll move that all out of the way and have a look at the actual board itself. So I'll just flip it over. It's got a bit of tape on it. So I will cut that tape. Sometimes they're taped, sometimes they aren't. This one is. So I'll just gently cut it. And slide the motherboard out of the bag. It's quite a tight fit. And there it is. Wow, it's quite beautiful actually. There's no plastic coverings on these panels here. One's a heat sink and the other one's uh, sort of a removable heat sink for the M.2s. It's quite a sizable, and this is metal. None of this is plastic, it's all metal, so pretty sizable. And then we've got the back I.O. ports, and you can see there are one, two, three, four USBs, five, six, seven, eight, nine USBs, ten, eleven USBs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the USB-C there for twelve. So you've got twelve USB ports on the back, your usual sort of... Um, well, that's that's line out microphone so we're not mm, interesting I'm guessing line out is going to be for the headphones so you've got two there's actually SPF diff as well and you've got display port if you've got onboard graphics pretty funky socket AM5 there four RAM slots you've got uh, oh there's an HDMI there weirdly um, there's the connector for the USB, USB-C front panel connector. Uh, I'm not seeing a USB 3 though, so that's interesting. Oh, wait, there it is. There's the USB 3. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's got a bit of heft to it. Um, any questions, um, stick them in the comments. I'm going to be using this in a, in a build. Um, so um, liking and subscribing is appreciated 
and thanks for watching this. Right, so the motherboard is inside the PC that I've just assembled. The actual case, and the, well, the original PC was from Overclockers in 2017. Uh, it had a, a 1050 uh, GPU in it, uh, an older AMD processor. So it's quite, it's lasted quite well, but they wanted to replace it. So we kept the case because that saves 100 quid and everything else was replaced. But that does pose a few interesting problems. <laughs> like for example, the LEDs. So the fans have got LEDs on them. You've got blue ones there and you've got blue ones there on that clear fan. They're not addressable, they're just on. So they're blue. So the other lights you see at the moment, because we're in the BIOS at the moment, the other lights you see are sort of default. So you've got ARGB on the caller, ARGB on the RAM, but up here, there's also ARGB there, because there's a strip, except that isn't ARGB. That one is just RGB, because it's 12 volts. So the motherboard's kind of cool because it supports both. So if I go down here, there's a connector there, that's the strip at the top. And there's also a connector there, that's the ARGB from the cooler, and obviously the LEDs on the RAM are built into the RAM. So the fact that it supports both is rather good. It does get better because the software, the Gigabyte software, controls both as well. So that works really well. I couldn't get OpenARGB to work with it, but the software, no, the Gigabyte software, actually works brilliantly. So now Windows is loaded and the Gigabyte software has kicked in, you can see that everything's gone blue, including the strip up there. That's all gone blue. Those lights were blue anyway and can't be changed. And the blue, the shade of blue actually matches quite well, doesn't it, I think. So you can have it all blue, <laughs> or, or you disconnect the fans and get new ones. There's also an LED down there as well, which is quite hard to see. It's like a little accent LED underneath the heatsink there. That's pretty cool too, uh, if you like that sort of thing. Um, that might get annoying um, if you've got... <laughs> if you don't want any lights on it but there is but you can turn those lights off so don't worry about that right next thing is um that button <laughs> so, so here's some footage of, of it outside uh yeah before i actually assembled the computer so here's a neat little thing <laughs> when you put your graphics card in it's often quite hard to get that clip out but on this motherboard you just press that <laughs> loving that so the car goes in and locks it up like that and then when you press that button it releases it so it's really useful isn't it because <laughs> in this situation with this air cooler you can't get anything between the cooler and the graphics card to flick the little latch so having that button to release the graphics card brilliant really nice another thing i want to point out is the m.2s there were three m.2 sockets or slots i should say and they're behind that big metal heat sink plate there you can just see the catch at the end that that works quite nicely it's tool free uh, you don't need a screwdriver to to take that off or put the m.2s in also the uh, battery doesn't have the sort of high security clip in it which some people might like <laughs> <laughs> based on another video I made about that for MSI boards. Um, so it, it's, it's, oh, it's kind of working, well, it, it is working really nicely. Um, I do want to talk about uh, a few things in the BIOS though, first of all. So they will be, uh, yeah, that's what's going to happen next. Right, so we're in the BIOS and there's a few things that we need to change. So first of all, you need to go to advanced mode. Uh, under advanced memory settings, if I just double click that, you can see memory context restore. Now it's actually set to automatic. Um, I've just enabled it. Okay, so that's kind of useful to do because it speeds up the boot. Um, there are some other settings as well that we'll look at. So under IO ports, you've got integrated graphics disabled on this system because the processor that's in it does have AMD graphics but I'm not using it so I've turned it off. Uh, there's also the Gigabyte Utilities download configuration so if you click on that and turn that off it stops it downloading the um, it stops it downloading the, the Gigabyte software if you don't want to use it. But that integrated graphics one's quite interesting because when you, when you disable it when you restart into Windows device manager shows an unknown device 
Now, if you've installed the AMD chipset drivers, then you could fix that simply by clicking on the device and updating the driver and pointing it at the AMD chipset folder. And then it'll pick it up as um, an AMD PCI device and then it'll all work fine. So this is a final tip. Um, Gigabyte motherboards and well, all modern motherboards have got some way of telling you what they're doing when they're booting. And this one's no exception. So I'm just gonna focus the camera there and then I'm gonna power it up and you can see that red light there. And it jumps around. When you power it up for the first boot, it's going to take a long time <laughs> while it trains the RAM. So that's why memory context restore is important. So if you're worried that it's not working, just wait. Well, the first time you power it up, wait. And what you'll find is <laughs> eventually it will load and then go in and tweak the um, memory context restore and then it should boot as fast as that because that's it done there. Anyway, um, any, I mean, it's 180 quid motherboard, so it should be good, shouldn't it? I mean, if I'm being honest. Uh, anyway, uh, if you've got any comments, stick them in the comments. Any questions, stick them in the, in the comments. I'll try and answer all, all of them if I can. Um, uh, liking and subscribing is appreciated. The kind of content I do doesn't encourage subscription because each video is kind of unique and disconnected from the rest. But if you did find this useful, just subscribe. I won't bombard you with videos. I don't send out notifications when there's a new video. So yeah, it's quite subtle. You saw your appreciation and then, <laughs> and then I don't bother you. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching anyway.